Chapters 33 through 40 of the Book of Exodus from the Holy Bible in Modern English. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Mark Penfold. The Holy Bible in Modern English. Translated by Farrar Fenton. The Book of Exodus. Chapters 33 through 40. Chapter 33. Then the ever living said to Moses, go from here you and the people whom you brought up from the land of the mitzrayim to the land which i promised to abraham and to isaac and to jacob saying to your descendants i will give it and i will send my messenger before your face and drive out the canaanites the amorites the hittites the perizzites the hivites and the jebusites from the land flowing with milk and honey yet i shall not bring you straight to it for you are a stiff-necked people, therefore I shall march you by a journey. When the people heard this hard command, they grieved, and many men would not put on their armor. Therefore the ever-living spoke to Moses, Say to the children of Israel, You are a stiff-necked people, a rebellious one. If I came a single moment into your midst, I could destroy you. However, strip off your arms, and I will make known what I will do to you. So the children of Israel quickly stripped off their armor. Then Moses seized the tabernacle and pitched it for himself outside the camp, at a distance from the camp, and named it his Hall of Meeting, so that all who wished to inquire of the ever-living were obliged to come to him to his Hall of Assembly that was outside the camp. But when Moses had gone away with the tabernacle, all the people rose in insurrection, and every man stood at the door of his tent and looked after Moses as he went off with the tabernacle. And when Moses went with the tabernacle, the cloud tremblingly descended and stood at the door of the tabernacle, and the word was with Moses. When all the people saw the trembling cloud standing at the door of his tabernacle, then all the people arose, and every one bowed down towards that tent. There the ever-living spoke with Moses face to face, as a man speaks with his friend. Then he turned towards the camp and watched it. But Joshua the son of Nun, his attendant, did not depart from the inside of the tabernacle. And Moses said to the ever-living, See, you spoke to me to bring up this people, but yet you have not instructed me as to whom you will send with me. You have, however, said, I know you by name, and you have found favor in my eyes. So now, if I have found favor in your eyes, teach me your path that i may know you since i have found favor in your sight and perceive that your people are this nation then he replied turn their advance back and i will support you but he answered to him if your presence is not with our marches do not take us from here and by what can it be possibly known that i have found favor in your sight i and your people would it not be by your marching with us and distinguishing me and your people from every nation upon the face of the earth then the ever-living answered moses i will grant also this request which you have made for you have found favor in my eyes and i have made myself known to you by a name he therefore replied show me i pray your majesty and he was answered I have passed all my beauty before your face, and I made myself known to you openly by my name of the ever-living. I show favor to those I love, and compassion to those I compassionate. But, he added, you are not able to see my face, for no man can see me and live. However, said the ever-living, mount up to me and sit on the rock, and my majesty shall pass over, and I will place you in a cleft of the rock, and shade you with my hand over you, until I pass over, so that upon removing my hand you may see my back, for you cannot look upon my face. Chapter 34 The ever-living afterwards said to Moses, cut for yourself two tablets of stone like the former ones and i will write upon them the commandments which were upon the first that you broke and when dawn comes go up at dawn to the mount sinai and sit with me upon the top of the hill but no man shall come up with you for no man must be seen in all the hill nor sheep or beast approach to the hill moses accordingly cut two tablets of stone like the former and arose at morning and ascended mount sinai as the ever-living commanded him and took in his hands the two tablets of stone then the ever-living descended in the cloud and sat there with him and he called on the name of jehovah 
when the ever-living passed over before his face, and he cried out, Ever-living, living God of gentleness and pity, slow to anger but great in mercy and truth, preserving mercy to thousands, taking away passion and rebellion and forgiving sin, but not ceasing to visit the passions of the fathers upon their children and upon the children of their children to the third and the fourth generation. Then Moses hastily rose and fell to the earth and worshipped, and said, If now I have found favor in your sight, Almighty, come, I pray, Almighty, near to us, for they are a stiff-necked people, and pardon our passions and sins, and give us our inheritance. And he replied, Now I make a covenant with all your people. I will produce wonders such as have not been from creation in all the earth or in any nation and every people among whom you are shall see the work of the ever-living for what i will do by you will be splendid attend to what i have communicated to you to-day then i will drive before you the amorites the canaanites the hittites the perizzites the hivites and jebusites keep yourselves from making treaties with the residents of the land when you come to it for fear they should be a snare in your midst therefore overthrow their altars and break down their pillars and cut down their shrines for you shall not worship another god for the ever-living is jealous of his name he is a jealous god beware of making alliances with the inhabitants of the land for fear you whore after their gods and sacrifice to their gods and approach to eat at their altars or take from their daughters for your sons for their daughters will whore after their gods and your sons whore after their gods nor shall you make a metallic god for yourselves you shall keep the feast of unleavened bread for seven days you shall eat biscuits as i have commanded you at the assembly in the harvest month for in the month of harvest i brought you from among the mitzrayim all breaking the womb is mine and every male of your possessions of cattle or sheep bursting it but an ass bursting it you shall redeem with a sheep and if you do not redeem it you shall break its neck all your eldest sons you shall redeem for you shall not see my presence empty-handed you shall labor six days but on the seventh you shall cease from ploughing and rest in harvest you shall also make a festival of rest for yourselves at the first fruits of the wheat harvest and a festival at the completion of the solar circuit of the year three times in a year all your men shall appear before the presence of the lord the ever-living god of israel for i will drive out the heathen before you and will extend your boundaries therefore no man of your land shall neglect to go up three times in a year to see the presence of your ever-living god you shall not shed the blood of my sacrifices away from it and you shall not leave until the morning the sacrifice of the passover you shall also decorate the house of your ever-living god with the first fruits of your fields when you come up you shall not boil a kid in its mother's milk finally the ever-living said to moses write these commands for upon the basis of these commands i have made a covenant with you and with israel and he was there with the ever-living forty days and forty nights and ate no bread nor drank water but wrote upon the tablets the commands of the covenant the ten commandments then moses descended from mount sinai with the tables of the testimony in the hands of moses on his descent however from the hill moses did not know that blinding rays of light from his face prevented their speaking to him but aaron and all the children of israel saw those rays of light from his face and they were afraid to approach him moses however called to them when aaron turned to him with all the leaders of the assembly and moses addressed them and after that all the children of israel approached and he communicated all that the ever-living had commanded him in mount sinai but that moses might speak to them he put a veil over his face but when moses went to speak with the ever-living he removed the veil from his face until he returned and came and related to them what he had been commanded so the children of israel feared in the presence of moses for rays of splendor preceded moses therefore moses placed the veil over his face when he went to speak with them chapter thirty five then moses assembled all the parliament of the children of israel and said to them these are the commandments which the ever-living has commanded you to practice 
you shall do your work for six days but the seventh day shall be a holy rest for you you shall rest to the ever-living every one doing business on it shall die no man shall labor in all your habitations upon the day of rest moses continued to speak to all the parliament of the children of israel saying this is also a commandment which the ever-living commanded saying let every one of willing heart bring an offering from themselves to the ever-living all of free heart consequently brought an offering from themselves to the ever-living of gold silver and brass and azure and purple and blue red and spun linen and ram's skins dyed red and badger skins and acacia wood and oil for the lamps and perfumes for the oil of consecration and incense for the veils and onyx stones and stones for the setting of the ephod and breastplate whilst those of skill among them came and made all that the ever-living commanded the enclosures of the tent and its veils the hooks and the planks the crossbars the standards and the bases the ark and the staves for it the covers and the covering veil the table and its staves and all its appurtenances and the shewbread and the reflectors for the lamps and the appurtenances for them and the burners and the oil for the lights and the incense altar and its staves and the oil of consecration and the perfumes for the aromatics and the veil for the door at the opening of the sanctuary the altar of burnt offering and its base of brass the staves and the whole of the instruments the bath and its bases the curtains for the court and its standards and their bases and the screen for the gate of the court the stakes for the sanctuary and the stakes for the court and the rest the robes for the service when serving in the holy place the sacred robes for aaron the priest and the robes for his sons the priests then the whole of the chiefs of the children of israel came before moses and brought whatever their heart suggested and all that their spirit dictated to them they brought as an offering to the ever-living to supply the hall of assembly and its appurtenances and for the sacred robes thus the chiefs coming to moses all who were of liberal heart brought ear and nose rings and brooches and beads and all things made of gold and everything which was adorned with gold to the ever-living every man also who possessed azure and purple and blue red and spun linen and red goat skins and badger skins brought them many nobles brought gifts of silver and brass as presents to the ever-living or of anything they possessed some brought acacia wood for the works and the skilful women brought yarn in their hands azure yarn and purple and blue red and linen all the men also who were skilful in spinning invited by their hearts gave goat hair yarn other men brought precious stones to set the ephod and the breastplate and perfumes and oil for the lights and for the consecration oil and perfumes for the incense every man and woman with a liberal heart brought all the things that the ever-living commanded by the hand of moses to be made as gifts to the ever-living then moses said to the children of israel the ever-living has called bezal el the son of aurai the son of hor of the tribe of judah and has filled him with genius skill intelligence and knowledge and a mechanical mind and inventive faculties for working in gold and silver and brass and to cut stones for jewelry and to shape timber for use and for all engineering work he has also given as a fitting assistant to him ahialab the son of ahissamach of the tribe of dan filling them with intelligence to work in every kind of contrivance in jewelry and embroidery in azure and purple in blue and red and flax and to weave all materials and to make patterns chapter thirty six bezalel and aholiab consequently worked with all the skilful men to whom the ever-living had given intelligence and understanding to assist them in their operations for the production of all the furniture for the sanctuary which the ever-living had commanded thus moses appointed bezalel and aholiab and all the skilful men to whom the ever-living had given an intelligent mind with every one whose mind invited them to go to the work to effect it and they received in the presence of moses all the offerings that the children of israel had brought to make the appliances for the services of the sanctuary they fetched their part from the treasury morning by morning and every skilled worker brought back the articles for the sanctuary which he had made from his workshop until they reported to moses saying 
the material which the people have brought is more than the requirements for the furniture that the ever-living commanded to be made from it moses therefore ordered to make a proclamation in the camp to inform every man and woman not to bring further material to offer for the sanctuary so the people ceased to bring it for the material was sufficient for all the appliances that had to be made and in excess so the workmen made the furniture for the tent ten curtains of spun linen and azure and purple and blue-red with pictures of cherubim formed in damask the length of the curtains was eighteen cubits each and the width four cubits each curtain the same to each curtain and the end of one curtain was joined to the other and the next curtain's edge was joined to the following for they made loops upon the selvage of each of the curtains at the end of the edges thus they made the curtains with attachments to join the two they made fifty loops on each curtain and fifty loop attachments were made upon the second curtain which joined it to the next opposite to the loops one for one they also made fifty hooks of gold to join the curtains one to the other so as to form one tent they also made curtains of goatskins for the canopy over the tent which were divided into twenty curtains the length of each curtain was thirty cubits and four cubits broad for each curtain all the twenty curtains were made equal and they joined five of the curtains together and six of the curtains together and made fifty loops on the lip of a curtain at its edge to fasten with and made fifty loops upon the lip of the second curtain for fastenings they also made hooks of brass to join the canopy to form it into one piece then they made the hall of assembly of red ram's skins with a veranda of badger skins over all of it they also made the planks for the tabernacle of acacia wood planed the length of a plank was ten cubits and a cubit and a half broad for each plank there were two hands to each plank at the joinings on one side and the other they made the same to all the planks of the tabernacle twenty planks were made for the tabernacle on the side towards the south and forty bases of silver were formed under the twenty planks two bases under a plank with two hands on them and for the opposite side towards the north they made twenty planks with forty bases of silver two bases for each plank but the width of the tabernacle to the west was six planks and two planks made the corners of the tabernacle at the corners and there were clutches fitting together and uniting them thus both were fastened at their edges thus there were eight planks and sixteen silver bases two bases and two bases under each plank he also made bars of acacia wood five bars for the planks at the first side of the tabernacle and five bars to the planks at the other side of the tabernacle and five bars to the planks of the tabernacle at its length towards the west and bars were made for the uprights placed between the sets of planks from end to end the planks however were plated with gold and their buttons were made of gold with lock holes to each one and the bars were plated with gold the veils also were made of azure and purple and blue-red and spun linen with damasked carabims worked on them they also made four posts of acacia and plated them with gold with pins of gold and cast for them four bases of silver they also made a screen for the door of the sanctuary of azure and purple and blue-red and spun linen worked as embroidery and the five pillars and the pins with the chapiters on their heads and the rods were of gold but the five bars were of brass chapter thirty seven bezalel himself made the ark of acacia wood its length two and a half cubits and its breadth a cubit and a half and a cubit and a half its height and he plated with pure gold within and without and made it a wreath of gold around and cast four knobs of gold for its four feet two knobs at the one side and two knobs at the other side he also made staves of acacia wood and plated them with gold so that they could put the staves into the ears upon the sides of the ark to carry the ark by he also made covers of pure gold two cubits and a half in length and a cubit and a half in width besides he made two cherubim of gold they were made standing at the two ends of the covers one cherub at this end and the other at that but the cherubim were extending their wings like a protection from above with their wings over the covers with the face of each towards the other over covers the cherubim faced each other he also made the table of acacia wood two cubits in length and a cubit and a half in breadth and a cubit and a half in height and plated it over with pure gold and made a coronal round about it of gold 
he also made a ridge of a handbreadth around it, with rays of gold upon the ridge all round, and cast four tabs of gold, and fixed the tabs upon the four sides where its feet were. The tabs were fixed near the ridge for the staves to carry the table with. He made the staves to carry the table of acacia wood, and plated them with gold, as well as the instruments that were upon the table, the dishes and the snuffers, and the cups and the plates which covered them, of pure gold. He also made the lamp of turned work of pure gold. Its shank, upright stalk, its branches, its cups, and blossoms were made of it. And there were six branches going from the sides, three branches from one side, and three branches from the other side. There were three almond cones and flowers upon one branch, a cup and a blossom, and three almond cones and flowers on an alternate branch, a cup and a blossom. Thus six branches rose up for the lamps, and upon the lamp four cones like almonds, a cup and a blossom. But there was a ball between two of the branches mutually, and a ball between two of the branches mutually, and a ball between two of the branches mutually, for the six branches that rose up from them. There were balls and branches for them mutually. All the appliances were of pure gold. He also made seven reflectors and holders and snuffers of pure gold. A talent weight of pure gold made these and all the instruments. Afterwards he made the altar of incense of acacia wood. Its length was a cubit, and its breadth a cubit square, and its height two cubits, with its horns. And he covered the top of it with pure gold, and around its sides and its horns, and made a coronal of gold around it. He also made two tabs of gold for it between the coronal, upon the two sides, upon its opposite sides, to insert the two staves to carry it by. He made the staves also of acacia wood, and plated them with gold. He also made the holy consecration oil, and the incense of pure spices, for perfume. CHAPTER thirty eight. Then he made of acacia wood the altar of burnt offerings. Its length was five cubits, and its breadth five cubits square, and its height three cubits. He also made horns upon its four faces. Its horns were all alike, and he plated them with brass. Besides, he made all the instruments for the altar. The cauldrons, and the brushes, and the sprinklers, and the rakes, and the shovels he made of brass. He also made for the altar a netted sieve of brass under its fireplace, with projections at its edges. And he cast four tabs of brass for the borders of the sieve, as receptacles for staves which he made of acacia wood, and covered them with brass, and placed the staves in the tabs at the sides of the altar to carry it by. He made them to fit into valves. He also made the bath and its pedestals of brass, with the mirrors for the use of whoever served before the hall of assembly. He also made the court at the side towards the south. The curtains for the court were a hundred cubits of spun linen, the pillars twenty and the bases twenty. The spikes of the pillars and the pins were of brass, but the rods of silver. And on the north face it was a hundred cubits with twenty pillars and twenty bases. The spikes of the pillars were brass, but the rods of silver. But on the west face the curtains were fifty cubits, ten pillars and the bases, with spikes for the pillars, but the rods were of silver. And upon the eastern face the sunrise, fifty cubits, fifteen cubits of curtains to the gate-posts, six pillars and six bases, but from the other gate-post on this side and that, to the gate of the court, curtains for fifteen cubits, six pillars and six bases. All the curtains around the court were of spun linen, and the bases of the pillars were of brass, but the spikes of the pillars and the rods were of silver, and the capitals of the pillars of silver, with rods of silver for all the pillars of the court. The screen for the gate of the court, however, was made of embroidery of azure and purple and blue-red and spun linen, and its length was twenty cubits, and in height at the fold-back five cubits, to the juncture with the curtains of the court, with four pillars and four bases of brass, but the pins of silver and the capitals of the heads of the pillars of silver, with all the other things for the tent and the court around of brass. These were the officers of the tent, the hall of assembly, which were appointed by the mouth of Moses for the service of the Levites under Athamar, the son of Aaron the priest, with Bezalel, the son of Aurai, the son of Hor of the tribe of Judah, to make everything that the ever-living had commanded by Moses, and with them Ahaliab, the son of Ahisamach of the tribe of Dan, to engrave and damask and embroider in azure and purple and blue and red and in spinning. 
the whole of the gold that was used in the furniture of the sanctuary was twenty-nine talents and nine hundred and thirty shekels by the sacred weight and of silver from the chiefs of the congregation one hundred talents and one thousand seven hundred and fifty-seven shekels by the sacred weight the half-shekel poll tax by the sacred weight from those who were passed into the regiments from twenty years of age and over that was six hundred and thirty thousand five hundred and fifty and there were used one hundred talents of silver in casting the bases of the sanctuary and the bases of the doors a hundred bases from a hundred talents a talent to a base they also used a thousand seven hundred and seventy-five for the spikes to the pillars and the capitals on their heads and the rods for them besides the brass offered was seventy thousand talents and four hundred shekels which were used for the bases of the doors of the hall of assembly and the brass of the doorposts and the brazen altar and the lattice work of brass for it and the whole of the instruments of the altar with the bases of the court around and the bases of the gates of the court and all the rest of the tent and the remainder of the court around chapter thirty nine and of the azure and purple and blue-red they made the service robes to serve in the sanctuary as well as the holy robes for aaron as the ever-living commanded to moses they also made the ephod of gold azure purple and blue-red and spun linen and there were strips of golden wire twisted in the working among the azure and among the purple and among the blue-red and among the linen threads that made the damasking they made shoulder-pieces that joined upon the two halves by a seam. They also made the breastplate of the ephod to be worn over it of gold, azure, and purple, and blue-red, and spun linen, as the ever-living commanded Moses. Besides, they made two onyx stones surrounded with gold settings, engraved like the engraving of a seal with the names of the sons of Israel, and placed them upon the shoulders of the ephod as memorial stones for the sons of Israel, as the ever-living commanded to Moses. They also made the breastplate of damasked work, as they made the ephod of gold and azure and purple and blue-red and spun linen. The breastplate was made a square doubled, a span long and a span broad doubled, and it was filled with four rows of stones. The first row was a ruby, a topaz, and a diamond. The second row was an emerald, a sapphire, and an opal. The third row was a ligure, an agate, and an amethyst. And the fourth row was a tarshish, an onyx, and a jasper, surrounded by settings of gold to fix them. Thus there were twelve stones with the names of the sons of Israel, with the names engraven like a seal, each with one name of the twelve tribes. They also made for the breastplate chain borderings of plated work of pure gold beside which they made two gold fastenings and two buttons of gold, and fixed the two buttons upon the two sides of the breastplate, and placed the two chains of gold upon the two buttons at the sides of the breastplate, and the two ends of the two chains they fixed upon the two buttons, and fastened them upon the two shoulders over the front of them. They also made two gold buttons, and placed them upon the two edges of the breastplate, upon the lips which went over the ephod inwards. Besides, they made two buttons of gold, and fixed them upon the two shoulders of the ephod, before and behind, to unite together at the top of the ephod with the breastplate. And they laced the breastplate, from button to button, to the ephod, with laces of azure, to secure the breastplate to the ephod, so that the breastplate might not fall off from the ephod, as the ever-living had commanded to Moses. They also made a mantle for the ephod, of azure-woven velvet and the mouth of the mantle was in the middle of it, like a coat of mail, with a binding around it, so that it might not tear. And they made on the hem of the mantle pomegranates of azure, and purple, and blue-red, with embroidery, and also made bells of pure gold, and fixed the bells between the pomegranates, upon the hem around the mantle between the pomegranates, a bell and a pomegranate upon the hem around the mantle, as the ever-living commanded to Moses. They also made vests of woven linen work for Aaron and his sons, and turbans of linen, and mitres of linen, and white drawers of spun linen, with girdles of spun linen, and azure, and blue-red, as the ever-living commanded Moses. They also made the flower of the holy crown of pure gold, and engraved upon it with the engraving of a seal, Holiness to the ever-living, 
and fixed a cord of azure upon it to fasten it upon the top as the ever-living commanded to moses thus were completed all the appliances for the hall of assembly they were made in the manner that the ever-living commanded to moses therefore they brought the tent to moses the sanctuary and all its furniture its hooks its planks its bars its pillars and bases and the awning of red ram skins and the awning of badger skins and curtains for the screen with the ark of witnesses and its staves and its covers and the table and all its furniture and the shoe-bread with the lamp of splendor and its reflectors and its series of lamps and the whole of its appliances and the oil for the lamps with the altar of gold and the oil of consecration and the sweet incense and the screen of the veil of the pavilion the brazen altar and the brass grating for it its staves and all its instruments the bath and its buckets the curtains of the court its pillars and their bases and the screen for the gate of the court its ropes and pegs and the rest of the appliances for the uses of the tent of the hall of assembly the ornamented robes for service in the sanctuary the sacred robes for aaron the priest and the robes for his sons the priests according to all that the ever-living commanded to moses the children of israel made the whole for the service then moses inspected all the work to see if they had made all of it according to the command of the ever-living they had done so and moses blessed them chapter forty then the ever-living spoke to moses saying to-morrow is the first month upon the first of the month you shall set up the tent of the hall of assembly and place there the ark of witnesses and cover the ark with the veil then you shall bring the table and arrange its appliances and bring the golden lamp and set up its reflectors and place the golden altar of incense before the ark of the witnesses and fix the screen of the doors to the tabernacle then place the altar of burnt offering opposite the door of the hall of assembly and set the bath between the hall of assembly and the altar and put water in it afterwards fix up the court around and put the screen to the gate of the court and then take the oil of consecration and consecrate the tent and everything in it and sanctify it and the whole of its furniture when it shall be sacred the altar shall be holy of holies next consecrate the bath and its buckets and sanctify it then present aaron and his sons at the door of the hall of assembly and wash them with water and clothe aaron in the sacred robe and consecrate him thus you shall make him holy and he shall be a priest to me afterwards present his sons and clothe them with vests and consecrate them as you consecrated their father and they shall be priests to me and the consecration shall be an appointment of them as priests for ever in their descendants moses consequently did all that the ever-living commanded him he effected it thus it was in the first month in the second year on the first of the month they erected the tent and moses set up the tent and fixed its bases and placed its planks and fixed its curtains and erected its pillars and spread the canopy over the tabernacle and put the awning of the tabernacle over its roof as the ever-living commanded him then he took and put the witnesses into the ark and placed the staves to the ark and put the covers upon the top of the ark and brought the ark to the tent and hung the veil of the screen and veiled off the witnesses as the ever-living commanded moses then he placed the table in the hall of assembly at the north side of the tabernacle outside of the veil and arranged upon it the prepared bread before the ever-living as the ever-living commanded to moses next he placed the lamp in the hall of assembly upon the table opposite at the south side of the tabernacle and raised the lights before the ever-living as the ever-living commanded moses then he placed the golden altar in the hall of assembly before the veil and offered sweet incense upon it as the ever-living commanded moses then he put the screen to the door of the tabernacle and set the altar of burnt offering at the door of the tent of the hall of assembly and offered upon it the burnt offering and the gift as the ever-living commanded moses then he placed the bath between the hall of assembly and the altar and put water in it to wash with and moses washed himself his feet and hands there with aaron and his sons before going into the hall of assembly and approaching the altar they washed themselves as the ever-living commanded moses they also erected the court around the tabernacle and the altar and fixed the screen at the gate of the court then 
Moses ceased from his labors. Then the cloud covered the hall of assembly, and the splendor of the ever-living filled the tabernacle, and Moses was not able to go into the hall of assembly, for the cloud rested upon it, and the splendor of the ever-living filled the tent. Afterwards, when the cloud arose from off the tabernacle, the children of Israel marched in all their marches. And if the cloud did not arise, then they did not march until the day when it arose. For the cloud of the ever-living was upon the tabernacle by day, and there was a fire by night. It was in the sight of the house of Israel in all their marches. The End of Chapters 33-40 through 40, And The End of the Book of Exodus Recording by Mark Penfold